Misfits 16. It's gonna be on August 10th in Miami, Florida. Fireworks. This has electricity bubbling around it. Genuinely, I'm not sure who's gonna win this. Is it crazy for me to say that this is one of the best cards that we've seen in Misfits? <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Misfits News. I'm your host, Ben the Bane Davis, as always, joined by my co-host, BL. And today, we have the full Misfits 16 card reveal. But before we dive into it, BL, how are you, sir? I'm doing super well, Ben. Ben, the moment we've all been waiting for, the Misfits 16 full card reveal. But before I get into that, let me give you a rundown of today's episode. Today, we'll be revealing the full Misfits 16 card. Mams Taylor leaks some DMs and Jake Paul versus Mike Perry is finally official. Ooh, a lot of people said, why are you reporting on an unofficial fight? Well, maybe we knew something, gang. We wouldn't talk about it if there wasn't a reason to, but we'll get to Jake Paul and Mike Perry later. First, you heard it, Misfits 16. It's going to be on August 10th in Miami, Florida. BL, run me through what we could expect. Well, we're kicking things off with the return of the lightweight tournament and the first semifinal, Yadi Gang TV versus the Argentinian King. What a fight that is to start off the night. Absolutely. I mean, we know Yadi Gang. This guy is a proven commodity in Misfits. And at lightweight, he's one of the best defensive practitioners in the scene. Now, Lil Cray Cray gave him a fantastic fight. I love that back and forth. And I know that we'll see Lil Cray Cray here soon. Argentinian King, though, BL, I feel still needs to establish himself. That win against Poli Arif had a bit of controversy attached to it, and this is an opportunity to take out Yeti Gang TV, put an exclamation point on it, and say, yes, I'm actually a real contender here in this tournament. The hatred Argentinian King has been getting is quite scary. I mean, the English people <laughs> want him out of the tournament, and Yeti Gang is going to make sure he gets out of this tournament, but it will be a bit of a battle. I think it's going mm. to be one of the higher level skill fights of the night. However, I want to move on to the next fight of the night, and for me, what may be the fight of the night. Samuel Erickson versus OJ Rose. The businessman returns. Oh, Ben. Talk to me. Mm, 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 mm. Fireworks. This has electricity bubbling around it. Samuel Erickson has made a lot of noise this year. And if you go watch his karate combat fights, you'll see why. This kid is special. He is beyond quick. He has a ton of power. But that's in karate combat. That's a completely different rule set. OJ Rose has been carving himself to be a damn good boxer, and he's become that. I think that it's going to be a very unique stylistic clash, and genuinely, I'm not sure who's going to win this. We've seen OJ Rose much more in the Misfits ring, but maybe Sam Erickson can create some waves in his uh, first fight here in the Misfits universe. Again, another super high-level fight. All of these fights so far, as we're ticking down the list, are competitive. They're high-level. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you something, I'm so excited to see Samuel Erickson make his Misfits debut. But OJ Rose is not an easy debutant opponent. We work things back, though, to the lightweight tournament because we have got a quarterfinal bout between Waleed Sharks and the anticipated debut of Ace Musa. Now, BL, this fight was supposed to take place last year. Now, finally, we're getting it on August 10th. And we'll eat sharks. Again, proven commodity. Ace Musa, a debutante with a lot of steam. Like you keep saying, it's a high-quality fight. I'm looking forward to it. Ace Musa is one that interests me because a lot of people have been saying, and Joey Knight told us actually on an episode a long time ago, that Ace Musa is one to watch. Everyone talks about him in the amateur ranks. So can he surprise a lot of people? Because right now, Welly Sharks is the favorite. But what's interesting about this fight is the winner fights Joey Knight in the semi-final, and mm -hmm. then the winner goes on to the final against Yadi Gang or Argentinian King. So we are seeing kind of the final chapters of this interim lightweight tournament. It's been one of the most exciting stories of 2024. Either Yeti Gang TV or Argentinian King will be in the finals. And then, like you just mentioned, these guys have to make it through Joey Knight which is a very, very tall task. Again, I'm not sure what Ace Moose is going to bring in. We've seen Waleed Sharks. I just think that whoever wins this quarterfinal matchup at Misfit 16, they're going to need the A-double plus game to beat uh, Joey Knight to get to the finals. But finishing off the night in Miami, we have the second fight in the Cruiserweight Tournament. Face Temper returning against Josh Bruckner. Temper coming off of the Ginty win. Bruckner, we haven't seen him since that's all Poppy lost, Bia. I'm loving these tournaments. They get more and more exciting and this is a really close fight i tell you why 
both these fighters have had some controversial losses. I mean, face temper, we saw get a bit of a beating from Slim. And obviously last time, as you just said, Josh Bruckner got knocked out by Salt Pappy. So both fighters, they're not going to come in with the most confidence. I agree in face temper's abilities and the improvements. I mean, we saw that against Ginty. Um, but Josh Bruckner, in my opinion, is a higher level opponent than Ginty. Absolutely. And as much as as much as I really like Malik Scott, I think he's technically 0-1 as a coach in the Misfits universe because Barbie couldn't get it done against Julie Poker. So there are a couple questions around that that coaching conglomerate that Temper is in. I just want a good fight, and it would be great to see face Temper continue the success uh, that he has. I think, you know, as high quality as this card is, is it crazy for me to say that this is one of the best cards that we've seen in Misfits in terms of skill level? Absolutely. When it comes to skill level, this non-pay-per-view card really delivers. I think there's some really, I mean, 50-50 fights. I keep saying this every single yeah. card, but the level is getting higher and higher. And that's what I find so interesting about Misfits. You look back a few years ago and the level was sometimes unbearable to watch. But now you're looking at it and it, the skill set is getting higher and higher and higher. And I'm telling you something. Yeah. I don't even know if we're done cooking on this card yet, Ben. Oh, you think that there's a few more surprises that I Mam's think, tail I in think the, the big has. man had some surprises for us. Does he not always deliver? He does always have some special things in his back pocket. Maybe before August 10th, we'll see a couple more fights get added. That might be a little, a little MF news. <laughs> Talking about fights that could come, we talked about one last week, BL, and we received a bit of backlash for speaking about it, but now it's official and we're looking like geniuses. It's official. Jake Paul versus Mike Perry. I mean, what a fight this is going to be. Obviously, a bit of background knowledge. Both of these guys have sparred before. It was years prior to. But Ben, before we get into that fight, I want to actually react a little bit of some footage. Well, first, Ben, let's dive into the spar. It is about five to ten seconds long. There's not a lot we can break from it. However, let's have a little watch through. Give me your thoughts of your initial reaction to what you're seeing here. Yeah, you can definitely tell that this was, you know, not the version of Jake Paul that we see today. Um, you get Mike Perry backing him up into the corner. Jake Paul seemingly just doesn't have those good reactions in this clip. And Mike Perry is able to pretty much control the ring, do what he wants. Uh, again, it's five to ten seconds. We we can't really do much with it, admittedly. Uh, We're not but quite weighed spar, level when it comes to breakdowns here. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, to me, it looks like Mike Perry is levels a couple levels above Jake Paul in this clip from the spar a couple years ago. From what I take from it, I think we're going to see something similar when it comes to the actual fight. Mike Perry is going to be on that front foot, and I think Jake Paul is going to take a back foot in the fight and get followed round. He's going to let Mike Perry tire out and then try to land those bigger shots, those counter shots, which are now going to be more precise, more powerful, as he's going to be a lot bigger than Mike Perry. That is what I'm sort of gathering from this. I don't think it's going to be anything like this, but we may see something similar on the fight night. Completely agree with you. Yeah, completely agree with you i do believe that mike's going to bring the pressure that's kind of what he's done in bkfc and it's not something that jake paul's experienced in a little bit i mean i think the tommy fury fight was the last time that he really was pressured by somebody and the big difference is again tommy fury and mike perry physically very different opponents now mike did weigh in at 184 for his last bkfc appearance that's when he got the one minute knockout over tiago alves so i don't think the 185 weight is going to be as huge of a factor as people are talking about mike's used to this um i think the cardio is gonna be fine i, I don't think that mike perry is gonna okay, gas so out it. but i do believe that jake paul can win which is crazy to say but bl i think a lot of that's due to an analysis done by our guy pascal logic on perry's pure boxing i think it's a great breakdown because i was watching this and i was really surprised because prior to this i was speaking to and i said mike perry he's going to demolish jake paul and i really mm. do believe that mike perry does stand probably the best chance out of all the opponents Jake Paul has had to beat Jake Paul convincingly, more convincingly than Tommy Fury. However, when you do watch this boxing footage, he gets caught a lot, a lot with the jab and he doesn't move his head and he gets caught over and over. Where Mike Perry finds success is in the pocket where he's able to be rough, where he's able to be dirty and hold onto the neck and land those bigger punches. However, when it gets to that boxing brain, when it gets to that longer reach, he gets kind of pieced up. However, what I want to talk over is something that we spoke about again last episode. Mm. Is Mam's telling the truth when it comes to I've offered the fight I have been pushing for this fight Kerside versus Jake Paul 185 next year now Mams has actually shown the receipts he put it on Twitter so the whole world can see Ben run me through <laughs> what 
on earth is going on? Yeah, well, we we spoke about this last week in the sense of, okay, if MAMS is actually distributing those uh, texts to Jake Paul's team in Akisa and he is trying to communicate, then it's really on Jake Paul. At this point, right? And and the big operative term there is if he was doing it. We know now that he is. So for me, it's just a reiteration of what we said last week. The ball is in their court. Mams is willing to play uh, by their rules. JJ is willing to play by their rules. I don't understand what is stopping this fight from occurring. They are bending over backwards to meet all of these demands that Jake and the team have uh, have issued. So I don't understand it. You know, it's it, it's unfortunate. I would love to see Jake Paul and KSI fight. I know we all would. As far as we know, Mams Taylor is doing everything he can to make it happen. It's now on on the shoulders of Jake Paul and his team. What we saw from the traditional world of boxing for many a years where the big fights weren't being made. And mm. now what we're seeing is that it's not happening in crossover boxing. And that's the last thing we wanted to see. We prided ourselves in, we make the big fights happen. It happens here. You can watch it here. Well, that is no longer seeming to be the case. We're going through so many politics. There's so many factors why these fights can't happen. And it's, again, it's, it's frustrating to see. And we can see Mams is trying to make the effort to make the fight happen. Yeah. Hopefully, we see it next year, but if we're not getting responses, what can we do? Never going to happen. Misfit 16, August 10th in Miami, Florida. What a card it is. Make sure you get your tickets and get that DAZN subscription. As always, I've been your host, Ben the Bane Davis, joined by my co-host, BL. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe. And join us every Tuesday and Thursday for more updates. Until next time, take care. Oh,